I'm happy to share with you with uh, what we have learned and accomplished during the past three months. It has been an emotional and stressful four months as China and the world was uh, gripped by the spreading virus. But as scientists, we all try to make a difference. But currently, many researchers have focused their efforts on vaccine development. Well, uh, there's a great urgency in developing a viable vaccine. Because they are given to healthy people, vaccines must meet high safety and clinical efficacy standards, presenting immense challenges for R&D. It will be some time before uh, effective vaccines available but uh, how could we contain the virus before that? Uh, we've been uh, uh, looking for a potential uh, cure or effective drug. Uh, so uh, what can be an effective drug? Uh, we believe a high efficacy drug against COVID-19 should be able to significantly cut down on the proportion of patients with mild to moderate symptoms um, turning into severe. Also, it would significantly reduce the damage of patients' lungs and other tissues and quickly um, cure uh, mild cases, thus shortening the hospital stay. So the plasma therapy uh, is, has been proven to be effective. Uh, its ability, uh, its availability is uh, uh, limited though by uh, insufficient plasma uh, supply. Uh, the active in the component of plasma therapy is the neutralizing antibody, um, which can be put uh, to large scale production. Uh, neutralizing antibodies are generated by uh, the human immune system um, neutralization. Um, you know, when the acid comes, you use um, base to neutralize. Uh, when the uh, virus comes now, we use the antibody to neutralize it. Um, so this is the uh, antibody um, that has a great uh, diversity made by the uh, human immune system. Uh, we know that uh, the SARS-CoV-2 is the RNA virus and uh, it has this uh, um, S protein, spike protein um, on the code. And uh, the, the red part of this uh, is uh, the receptor binding domain, RBD. Uh, the uh, virus uh, binds to the ACE2 receptor on the human cells um, so the RBD is, is the, uh, 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 the binding uh, uh, portion uh, and, and the cell, in fact, uh, uh, the cells are infected by the virus. So the neutralizing antibody binds to the um, virus, preventing the virus infecting the cells. So our goal is to identify neutralizing antibodies from uh, covalescent um, the plasma and use uh, uh, and try to uh, uh, make them in large quantity and uh, use that as a substitute for the covalescent uh, plasma to inject uh, into uh, uh, the patient as a drug. Uh, there have been uh, a previous uh, success of uh, uh, neutralizing antibody uh, drugs, uh, HIV, in the case of HIV, uh, Ebola, and MERS. Uh, in the case of uh, Ebola, um, uh, so the antibody was uh, developed, uh, but it was, a, 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 in, in both the case of Ebola and MERS, uh, the pandemics didn't you know, really uh, uh, Continue. Uh, so, in the case of MERS, the uh, uh, 
uh, after the first phase of the clinical trial, um, the pandemic uh, stopped. Uh, so uh, the development of these previous antibodies um, took uh, 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 a long time and, uh, and the time scale of, of months. Uh, the previous uh, technique, uh, um, uh, single cell um, uh, amplification or, or PCR, uh, are uh, somewhat time consuming, but uh, when the pandemic uh, started uh, at the beginning of the year, you know, we really have no time to, uh, uh, to wait. Uh, I, I, I should also say that although this uh, uh, previous success uh, really proved the usefulness of uh, the uh, neutralizing antibody, in, in the case of HIV, it, it, uh, it took, uh, years of development, uh, HIV genome changing rapidly with time. Uh, so people were looking for this uh, uh, antibodies that would uh, be suitable for uh, uh, overcoming the uh, mutations and would be generally useful for everybody at different times. But in the case of uh, 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 SARS-CoV-2, uh, the genome is uh, rather stable, uh, especially in the region of uh, RBD. Uh, um, so well, it doesn't look like uh, if we find a good neutralizing antibody, uh, you would uh, be rapidly um, uh, obsolete uh, or, uh, uh, or the good ones will change with time. So uh, our uh, effort, uh, started you know, on the uh, January 3rd of Chinese uh, lunar year uh, when I uh, returned from uh, uh, Europe to Beijing uh, on the same day of uh, my former graduate student, uh, Richard, who was the only one uh, who moved uh, with me from Harvard to Peking University uh, last year. Um, so we, uh, at the beginning, we were, uh, uh, were uh, our specialty is uh, single cell genomics. Uh, we were uh, not experts on uh, virology or um, uh, immunology. Uh, we just wanted to, to do something to, uh, to help out. Uh, but when we realized that uh, single cell genomics uh, is actually uh, uh, actually would be a very good approach in uh, identifying neutralizing antibody. We were uh, very excited, so we visited the uh, UN hospital, uh, one of the three designated uh, uh, COVID nineteen hospitals in Beijing, and met uh, President Jing, and uh, proposed to him about. Uh, uh, this experiment, and he immediately agreed uh, to collaborate with us and provided the uh, covalescent uh, plasma uh, from recovered uh, patients. Uh, so he sent these two researchers to my lab, and they were trained by Richard and, and Chen Yang. And after two days of training, they went back to their P3 lab uh, wearing this uh, uh, heavy uh, protective gears. Uh, they, we're only supposed to work uh, five hours a day, but they always uh, work over time. And in the end, they were uh, uh, quarantined, were separated from uh, um, their, um, their families for uh, almost three months. Uh, they could only collect uh, data for us in the evenings because during the day, the P3 lab uh, were used for uh, the patients. So uh, we, uh, uh, we did the single cell uh, uh, RNA sequencing. So uh, using the 10X machine, this is a, a, a very popular experiment now. Each dot here is one cell, but we could identify this uh, different uh, cell types um, listed here. What we were most interested in is the um, the memory B cell. So the uh, uh, 
uh, this memory B cells came from uh, originally uh, from uh, the bone marrow. And then uh, when they get matured, uh, uh, they have this uh, uh, BCR, this uh, receptors uh, that uh, have the same sequence of this uh, antibody, this Y-shaped antibody. Um, so uh, these cells don't divide. Um, and, and what's interesting is that this is a, um, of course, uh, uh, those of you who are immunologists, you know, uh, uh, this highly diverse uh, 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 repertoire of uh, uh, you know, 10 to the ace uh, different types of uh, uh, sequences, B cells, uh, they are made um, even before the antigen came. Uh, but uh, they get selected and, and amplified uh, uh, once uh, uh, antigen binds to the, uh, uh, the PCR, the receptor. And then this cell starts to get uh, replicated, uh, hence the amplification of the cell numbers. Uh, so this is the uh, uh, VDJ. Uh, recombination uh, that was first uh, discovered by um, uh, this was a Nobel Prize to um, Tony Gava. Uh, so uh, this uh, uh, 40 uh, uh, basis of V sequence and 23D and the six uh, J uh, uh, six basis of J sequence. Uh, this is like a three deck of deck of cards, if you shuffle them, you have uh, 40 by 23 by six um, types of uh, uh, sequences um, that are uh, uh, the, the resulting DNA sequences. So that would give you 5,000 something, right? That's uh, uh, not quite enough, but this is only for the uh, heavy chain and there's a light chain uh, and that's still not uh, ten to the ace. Uh, there's also the somatic mutations on on this. Uh, so uh, after all of this, you have ten to the ace, and, and they are uh, translated to form this uh, uh, antibodies. And then uh, uh, these are the PCR, and when the uh, antigen, in our case, the virus or piece of a uh, piece of the uh, fragment of the uh, uh, viral protein, uh, say S, pro uh, S protein, comes binds to the surface of the uh, this BCR, and the B cell is activated and start to replicate, and then uh, we would have uh, uh, the memory B cells um, that still have the BCR and the plasma uh, cells that. Uh, secrete uh, these antibodies into uh, blood. Um, and then the next step is the uh, uh, evolution in the uh, terminal centers in the um, uh, bone marrow. Um, uh, so this involves uh, uh, T helper cells and uh, this is a very complicated uh, uh, process that uh, really continue to evolve and select uh, those uh, uh, antibodies, and uh, you are probably all familiar with this uh, IgM that has been used for the uh, uh, antibody detection of uh, uh, COVID-19. So that appears in a few days and drops down. And, and then this IgG, that's the one uh, we're looking for in the uh, um, uh, memory B cell. So it uh, uh, it, it picked about the time uh, about time uh, after uh, two weeks, and then when uh, the patient is recovered and goes home, it, it drops down, but not down to zero. And when the second infection comes, it shoots up. Uh, so this is the uh, memory of the uh, immune system. So we uh, have the recovered patients come back to the hospital. Uh, um, about um, 
uh, uh, between the, uh, the third and fourth week um, to collect uh, uh, their blood sample. So the, uh, the very first uh, patient they look at, uh, in, uh, look at this, the, uh, the sequence of uh, six individual B cells. Um, and so uh, as I mentioned, there's large diversity um, each one uh, is almost different, right? But this six happen to be the same, um, except there's this somatic mutations. Uh, so this is a heavy chain and this is light chain. So that means these six cells came from one uh, parent uh, B cell. So they are enriched, uh, supposedly because uh, uh, this is useful uh, antibody. Uh, so uh, we first use this as a cri uh, criteria in selecting the uh, sequences um, uh, for in vitro um, uh, uh, in vitro translation, right? So once we know the B cell sequence, then uh, we would be able to uh, make the protein according to the central dogma molecular biology, but in vitro, we give the sequence to a company they make for us. Uh, so um, once we have the protein back in a few days, uh, we would characterize them. We measure the KD, uh, to, uh, the binding to, uh, say, S protein. And uh, 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 you know, we get a lot of the, uh, proteins with reasonable KD. And this is compared to the KD of uh, 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 S protein binding to ACE2, right? So uh, the, uh, the binding is more stable for uh, the antibody to the S protein. Uh, so uh, the antibody can uh, compete with the ACE2 binding. Uh, so, uh, but just the binding, uh, doesn't mean it has uh, the uh, activity of neutralization. So we uh, uh, use this uh, pseudo virus uh, to uh, mimic the uh, real virus. Uh, uh, this is something we could do in our own lab. Uh, so uh, the pseudo virus has uh, uh, this luciferase. Uh, incorporated into the genome. So when it enter uh, uh, a cell, it, it generate uh, chemiluminescence, which we can detect um, as a commercial machine. And then uh, as a function of the antibody concentration, uh, we measure the, the inhibition. And at this uh, middle point, as IC50, uh, that, that is the, uh, the concentration um, used to characterize uh, uh, how good uh, this uh, antibody is. Of course, the, the lower the better. So Yinghui is our uh, expert uh, doing this neutralization experiment. So once we you know, select uh, this, uh, uh, the good ones, uh, we, uh, we send it to the P3 lab uh, to use the real virus. Um, that is uh, a harder and longer experiment. We don't have the fluorescent uh, indicator. Uh, so, uh, so basically we would just, uh, uh, sorry, uh, we would count the, uh, uh, basically under the microscope, uh, the ISA microscope, you see the cells. And then uh, when the cells are killed, uh, uh, by the virus, you see these holes in this, uh, uh, you, uh, you see the plaques. Uh, so uh, that took a few days, uh, my experiment took a few days, but that uh, uh, we have this actually very quantitative uh, uh, measurement and that uh, eventually give us this IC50 for the real virus. Um, this is done in collaboration uh, with this uh, colleagues uh, in Beijing. Um, so, uh, so unfortunately, if we just uh, use this uh, uh, criteria of number of 
the same uh, clonal type uh, detected in the plasma. Uh, we only have 1% of the chance of finding uh, uh, neutralizing antibodies. Uh, the antibodies is this neutralization uh, uh, activity. So uh, we needed to uh, improve this screening. Uh, so Janet uh, joined us and she used this uh, uh, magnetic bead um, uh, bound with S protein or um, RBD. And then uh, we, we have this functional pull down uh, of this uh, uh, B cells uh, uh, with these beads uh, um, moving towards the magnet. And uh, with that, we were able to increase the the yield of uh, obtaining the neutralizing uh, antibody to uh, uh, 10%, 20%. And with that, uh, we obtained, I believe, the first uh, um, cryo-EM structure of this uh, neutralizing antibody, the uh, purple part bound to the, uh, the red part is RBD. And, uh, uh, the fact that uh, uh, you know this is a uh, EM structure rather than a crystal structure, uh, uh, we uh, got to look at this uh, large uh, trimer of spike protein. So we see uh, where the uh, uh, binding site is with respect to this big trimer. Right. So we found uh, uh, almost all of our antibodies with uh, high potency uh, in neutralization uh, bound to the RBD. Um, um, and then uh, this structure also showed that uh, the, uh, the binding side of the antibody overlaps, uh, the binding sites on the RBD overlaps of the, uh, overlap with the binding side of RBD with the ACE2. So, so basically the, uh, antibody binding blocks the um, uh, RBD uh, from uh, infecting cells, uh, binding to ACE2. So this was the uh, structural work by Professor Xiaodong Su and uh, 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 Junyi Xiao of Peking University. Yeah, this shows overlap of the uh, ACE2 and uh, the um, antibody uh, on the um, RBD. So, uh, so this uh, structural uh, uh, insight uh, gave us the hint that uh, uh, we should uh, perhaps use the structural information to screen the uh, antibodies. So uh, once we have the antibody sequence, um, there's this software uh, developed by these people uh, to uh, predict the structure of the antibody. And then we, uh, we look at the uh, predicted structure of uh, our antibody uh, to see whether they exist in the- uh, Getting a two minute warning. Yes, uh, in the protein data bank. And, and then we found this uh, uh, CDR3, this is a region in the heavy chain and light chain that are conserved in this M396. Uh, that is antibody for the SARS. So uh, uh, all of these antibodies that have the same uh, similar structure of the SARS neutralizing antibody uh, have this, uh, 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 very potent uh, neutralizing, uh, neutralizing uh, activity. Okay, so uh, with that, we have a 90% of uh, yield in selection. Um, so the best one uh, among the uh, 14 highly potent neutralizing antibodies selected from 60 patients, we have this winner, 386-2, uh, um, and that has uh, 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 100 picomolar of IC50 for 
uh, the real virus, uh, the real virus. Uh, we could actually find the mutations in the, in the same patient uh, sample. We can uh, uh, we really get to see how these point mutations uh, that are occurring uh, during this uh, selection process. Uh, uh, you really see the IC50 changing with uh, the two or three mutations uh, you know, makes a big difference. So uh, I just want to end with uh, our uh, animal result. Um, so this is the control experiment. We infect uh, 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 mice uh, and uh, well, two hours after that, we give our uh, antibody uh, and then uh, as a control, we inject some other uh, irrelevant uh, antibody, and then this is the uh, the control. And uh, this body weight doesn't change that much, uh, uh, only one percent. But then uh, uh, this uh, uh, prophylactic experiment, one day before the uh, infection, we inject this, and then this doesn't change either. But this is a um, more telling. This is the control. Uh, five days after the um, infection, the uh, therapeutic uh, experiment showed a threefold, uh, three order magnitude, sorry, three order magnitude reduction. Uh, so uh, the uh, uh, protection experiment, on the other hand, shows uh, no virus detected at all uh, in uh, the lung of uh, the mice. So this experiment proved uh, the efficacy both in uh, therapeutic and prophylactic uh, um, uh, effects. Uh, so this paper was published in uh, Cell Magazine, and we were not the only one uh, who could uh, find neutralizing antibodies. And I, I listed uh, uh, these papers that published uh, um, you know, always in the uh, a week or two. Uh, and here I, I plot IC50s. So uh, uh, I, I believe we have the uh, smallest IC50. And uh, the, the first ex experiment we gave, we used 20 milligram um, dosage. Uh, and that, that effect was, uh, it was good, but uh, uh, I think uh, an effective drug really require uh, a, a low enough, uh, you know, we like to reduce this to a few milligram. That was uh, sort of the, the norm that because uh, you don't want this drug to be too expensive. You don't want it to be like uh, cancer drugs and, and cost a lot of money for each patient, uh, patient. And also you want to give just a shot, not IV injection, uh, want to reduce the cost and uh, uh, easy to uh, uh, transport and store. Uh, I want to end with uh, um, uh, the note that uh, the virus have no borders, neither should our fight against it. I wrote this article last year uh, before the pandemic, but I uh, uh, let's say really the pandemic has proved that the uh, virus knows uh, no borders. So in China, we don't have um, patients. Uh, so the clinical trial uh, will be done uh, abroad. So I've been, uh, uh, collaborating with uh, uh, scientists uh, in the U.S., in Australia, in, in Europe. So this is really a fight, uh, uh, really an international fight. So I think I'm running out of time. I uh, will not read this uh, uh, summary. I just uh, want to uh, end by uh, thanking uh, my uh, co-workers and collaborators, many of them. I uh, got to know uh, only in, in the past three months uh, and uh, this collaborating uh, institutions and I thank you for your attention. Thank you, uh, Sunny. Uh, so I think right now we can open it up to questions. Uh, please raise your hand if you have uh, um, any questions. <coughs> okay, uh, Eric. Hi, Sonny. It was a, a great talk. Thank you. Um, I have a question about the, the efficacy of the antibodies that you've identified mm -hmm. and the progression of the disease in the patients from which the antibodies came from. So, for example, 
um, the, the antibody that you defined as the winner, um, did that patient have a particularly good outcome or quick uh, recovery from the disease compared to, say, an average convalescent patient? Uh, Eric, that's a very good question. And uh, we, uh, uh, to do this uh, experiment uh, efficiently, we had to bin 10 people. But uh, now we have uh, really identified uh, you know, among the 10, which one uh, we got the individual, we're going back uh, to this patient's uh, uh, record. And uh, uh, so the question is whether uh, this person is, uh, uh, has a particularly high yield for this uh, uh, good antibody. Uh, Oh, we don't know yet because I, 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 I actually, see, it, it might not be the case. I think uh, uh, we are only sequencing uh, 10 to the fifth, uh, 10 to the fourth or 10 to the fifth cells per person. Whereas the, the diversity, as I mentioned, with 10 to the eighth. So um, uh, for each individual, uh, they got good ones, right? So uh, that's why they all recover, uh, most of them recover. But when we actually go to search them, we don't get all of them. <laughs> so uh, I think there's that part. So uh, this is why uh, it's still not so easy to look for them, uh, even though you think you would be, uh, the any good antibodies would be abundant enough uh, for the uh patient to fight against. Uh, so uh, I, I don't know the answer to your question yet, but uh, I, I, I'm sure there will be uh, a difference among people. But we, uh, I think uh, at this point, it's probably just where we got lucky on this one to find a good one That's because we don't sequence all of them. We only sequence, uh, you know, one part per thousand of uh, uh, this. Uh, assuming they have a, uh, comparable um, number, but I, I think the uh, enhancement, the number we see, uh, you know, 100, uh, uh, the, the tens of them, we don't quite see 100, so it's, uh, uh, it, it, they're still rare. 